The Evo offering has been one of my main bikes since February of this year. Many of you have asked about Cascade Components progressive linkages because I really like to jump a lot. And if you're jumping a lot, a more progressive suspension is often very beneficial. That said, I didn't know much about this company, but living here in Western Washington, the headquarters of Cascade Components isn't that far away. So Logan and I made the trip down, got to meet the guys behind Cascade Components, got to watch some links get machined right in front of us. And then the crew at Cascade was nice enough to give us a couple of links to try out on our own bikes. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you some of the test riding Logan and I both did on our bikes using the Cascade links. I'm on a 2021 Evil Offering. Logan is on a 2020 Santa Cruz Tallboy. I wanna give a special thanks to my pals over at Jensen USA. Jensen made this video possible with their support. Thank you, Jensen. I have a link over to the Evil Offering in the YouTube description below. It takes you over to Jensen USA and anything you purchase while you're at the Jensen website will help keep me making videos like this. Beyond Jensen, I'm also supported by P&W Components, Industry 9, and Shimano. All right, let's go meet the Cascade guys, and then we're gonna go riding. Hey, is David around? Hey, Dave. Hey, how's Jeff. Going? Nice to meet you, David. Indeed, how's it going? Excellent, how about you guys? How's the drive? Mellow. Perfect. This is Logan. Hey, nice to meet you. The plan was to get a first-hand look at where the links are made, learn a little bit about the company, and ask the important questions like, if companies hate you or love you or what? Most cool. Mostly hate. A bunch of folks have been like, you should totally do a video about Cascade components. And I'm like, sweet. And then people always think it's the same as P&W components and the yeah. same as Cascade racing design. So there's a, a bunch of confusion there. Before we started talking about the actual links, Jimmy took us for a quick walkthrough of the factory so we could see what does what and where. So Cascade Components is part of Dive Extras Inc, uh, which has a couple of different arms. Okay. Um, Cascade Components is relatively new. Uh, I've been with Dive Extras and Clara Works, the parent company, for like just about six years at this point. Okay. The other armor the company actually makes e-mountain bikes. Well, not quite. They're actually the e-mountain bikes of the scuba diving world, and they're underwater scooters designed to tug you along while you're scuba diving. You got to tell us how you convinced the boss that he could make tens of dollars in the mountain bike industry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was pretty simple, actually. I emailed him one day, and I had been riding my bike with this, like, I'd the last winter I had just like on my own time made a link for my Nomad because I had broken it and okay. it was just like waiting waiting around for the replacement to show up and figured I'd kill some time and then I'd been riding it for like you know most of the summer and was like oh man this thing's pretty sweet and some people were like you made it more progressive yeah cool and some people were like oh man like I'd want to try that like if you ever made one so yeah. then you know one day I, I uh, yeah, hit him up and was like hey like you know there are at least a handful of people that had you know be willing to purchase these. This is something we actually get a lot of questions about. All the chips from the machines. Oh, sick. They, <laughs> they get dumped into the system back here, which compresses them down into these blocks. These blocks are then picked up by the friendly local recycler. So this is our lathe. We make on this our spacers, which that's actually what it's spinning out right now. These are spacers for certain Santa Cruz links. Cascade parts are maybe 5% of the time yeah. on the lathe. Lately, they've been They've been like the 95% of the time on the Oh, mills. wow. Dude, what a Rube Goldberg contraption. I love it. Automated tool changers on all the machines. So you load yeah. every single tool you need in there. You can see them up there. You hit go and I mean, you just, is, you make sure they're touched off and then like you don't have to manually change anything. So this is one that isn't in production yet, actually. It looks like it's in production um, to me. <laughs> well, so we're, we're proofing it out for production. Okay. This is a pivot switchblade. Oh, link. cool. So people will get hyper-focused on the amount of travel that the links have. That's not what it's about. It's about the leverage curve. Yeah, the progressivity. Yeah, people actually, they'll ask us, are you going to make a link for a Rocky Mountain? You don't need to. It's like, no, they already <laughs> did it. Is that a 5010? So yeah, 5010. Oh, that's not a stock link. No. It's just a yeah, black one. Yeah, we have one. our link on there right now. It blends in real good because it's black. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you gotta do purple. See, if we were good at YouTube, we'd ask everyone to comment down below what color Cascade Link they would buy. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd get told oil slick. Oh, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you should bounce on that thing a little bit. Well, this bike's light. I hate it. All these bikes are lighter than mine. I'm riding like basically it's double a... down on everything. That's way easy to get in the air. Boy. So that bike right there, so I have it set up as a, as a mullet. 
if you set it up with a mullet, because your shock yoke is about five millimeters longer, you can increase your shock stroke by five millimeters. So this actually has 200 millimeters of travel in the rear. Wow. Almost a downhill bike. It is almost a downhill bike. And perhaps the biggest question for Cascade components. So everyone always asks like, can't you just put a volume reducer in the shock and change things? And like, honestly, the X2 is super limited in how many volume reducers you can fit in there. Mm -hmm. So the link seems like it then opens the door to continue to fine tune with volume reducer. Or is there a bigger difference between volume reducers for progressivity versus? There, there is a much bigger difference, yeah. Cool. When you're changing the amount of ramp at the shock, you're increasing the pressure differential between top and bottom of travel. Um, and that like shock pressure pretty directly drives your rebound speed. Okay. So if you cram it full of you know, volume spacers, you get either slow rebound at the at, like, top of travel and normal rebound at bottom of travel, or you know the other way around, you mm -hmm. get it, you know, reasonable at top and then at bottom it's a pogo stick yeah and a lot of people say like oh well but there's high and low speed to deal with that well you don't actually know whether you're going to be in high or low speed over any portion of your shock travel because you like in a g out your wheels are supported so you're going to be in low speed rebound if the shock is rebounding in a g out regardless of where you are in travel your leverage ratio also plays into like that effective spring rate as you would feel it at the wheel so if the leverage ratios are the same if you're running you know, a whole bunch of volume spacers with the stock link, it's actually going to feel stiffer at bottom of travel than fewer volume spacers, but a higher initial pressure. The whole wall of pressure thing that people will sometimes describe. If you do fewer spacers and more pressure at, at, you know, like the sag point or whatever you'd call it, then you get, it's just kind of a more even ramp up. It doesn't feel quite as stiff at the bottom of travel. You know, your, your curve is less like that, and more like that. So the leverage ratio is increased at the start of the travel to offset that yeah. like increase in rate. So what Jimmy just explained there is pretty complex. I'm gonna pull up their graph real quick to show you what he's talking about. You can see in the first part of the travel, the leverage ratio is quite a bit higher than the stock setup. Then at the end part, the leverage ratio is quite a bit lower. The goal of this is to get the rider to run a little bit more pressure, still achieving a similar amount of sag, but having a softer sensation at the top of the stroke and a firmer feel at the bottom of the stroke. How much pushback do you get from a brand when you make a link that has a 20% increase in progressivity at the end and then is also more supple at the top. Are they saying that you're ruining their work or? It depends on the company that you talk to. There are definitely some that have a more positive outlook on it than yeah. others. It's not like the stock link is, is useless. It's not like it doesn't have a purpose. There's a certain market that doesn't really overlap with like our intended user base or whatever you call it. Um, that they're designing bikes for. Like, you know, you, you go like further south and there are trails where you have like a few big impacts sprinkled here and there, but overall the trail's smoother. Yeah. Um, and that's not really what these links are, are necessarily intended for. Like they're intended for the trails around here where you have a bunch of roots and then like a big drop and then more roots and maybe that drops into the roots. Uh, <laughs> well that, and we have mountains here and our trails actually go down the mountains so we can, like it's just a whole different experience than flat yeah. mellower trails in California and the Bay Area that are just, they're fun, but it's a whole different experience. So it's just, it's another bit of the, the tuning, you know, it's like, yeah. there's not a shock tune for absolutely everyone. Yeah. I, I don't think there's, you know, kinematics that work for absolutely everyone. <laughs> I want to give a big thanks to the guys at Cascade Components for stoking out Logan and myself with a couple of links to try. This right here is my Evil Offering, and I've been dialing it in ever since I got it back in February, and this is the best it's felt so far. And the Cascade Link, I think, has helped with that. Beyond the Cascade Link, I've tweaked a ton of stuff on this bike, and I'll do a whole separate video all about the offering and how it's been dialed in. Today, we're just going to talk about the Link. <laughs> Wow, I think I pushed right through the stuff. <laughs> a couple weeks before I threw this Cascade link on this offering, I threw a Fox DPX2 rear shock on here. I didn't even crack it open and look at the volume reducer situation. Turns out there was 1.2 volume reducer. On the trail, I ended up with quite a bit of air in there, not a ton of sag, and it felt fine, felt pretty good. I changed a few other things on the bike and it started to feel way closer to how I want it to feel. I've been looking for more support in the suspension. I've been wanting to run less sag because I wanted a slacker head angle. There is an angle set in there. We'll go over all that in the official evil video. Ever since swapping on the Cascade link, I noticed there is a little bit more mid-stroke support. It's not a whole other world of support. 
it's a little bit harder to bottom out. So to me, it feels like where the curve crosses over the stock curve, it almost could be a little bit sooner. I wouldn't mind if it was, it got more progressive sooner into the stroke. So I ended up swapping in a 0.6 volume reducer a couple weeks ago. That's a nice upgrade. I might even try a 0.8 and try running a tad less um, sag. If you can't tell by now, I'm not really concerned about going as absolutely fast as possible. Instead, I really like playing with the bike, doing some silly stuff, but I put a lot of energy into the bike. If I have to control that energy with damping, well, it just kind of gets shut down. As a result, I like bikes that are very progressive, have a little bit more open suspension, and you know what? That just makes their feel that much more playful and poppy. Sure, people always use that term playful and poppy, but to me it means having an amount of progression where you don't bottom out on the takeoff of the jump, let alone on the landing. When it comes to cornering, yes, I could probably get more traction with a touch more damping. It's also pretty easy to go too heavy on your low speed damping and then have a lack of traction. When it comes to the suspension and the progressivity, well, you know, I certainly bottomed the bike out a few times while testing this link. And you know what? The rear end did not bottom too harshly in any of those instances. It was fine. Dealing with a little bit softer feel at the top of the travel, well, that kind of caught me by surprise. It's a little bit more sensitive than I was really expecting. It was already a plush bike to begin with. This makes me want to increase the low speed damping some more, but then we run against my own energy inputs and that kind of mutes the bike and sucks up energy. Since I am supposed to be talking about the link here, it definitely made the bike softer and I am definitely going to be continuing to add more and more pressure to it. I guess I'm supposed to make some kind of a verdict here and you know what? I do not regret putting this link on the bike. Since putting this link on, I've changed to yet another shock on here and I'm going to talk more about that in an upcoming video. So. Jury is, I guess, a little bit still out on the link on the offering, but you know, this is not an end all be all test. If I get my druthers, hopefully I can try one of these things on an Ibis Ritmo, as I've been riding the Ritmo for years and I'm more familiar with that bike as a platform. Before we expound too much more on this link on the offering, let's check in with Logan and see how his experience has been on the Santa Cruz Tallboy. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Oh, uh, my name is Logan, uh, Logan Nelson. I, uh, I film with Jeff here. Do you feel on the spot right now? A little bit. I don't know <laughs> if I've ever been behind one of these <laughs> like this. And how many of you filmed of me sitting there jabbering? A lot, a lot. Probably more than a hundred. Yeah, that's a lot of time. What's this bicycle sitting next to you? This is a Santa Cruz Tallboy. Uh, V4, I think, it's a 2020. Yeah, size medium. I am 5'7", and 140, 5-ish pounds. I'm gonna make sure I don't like wad up on the, uh, the stump there. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. You wanna hit the landing. So once you go off the takeoff, look at the landing and then land on the, where the landing is. Oh, when you say it like that. That's how you do it. So, so this is current model Santa Cruz Tallboy. Yes. And if I'm wrong, the commenters will let me know. I'm sure they will. I, uh, I'm not a huge nerd. I'm not always up to, up on the current happenings, but it's a good bike. I like it. <laughs> you scared? A little scared or probably so, a lot scared because I don't know if I'm going to do it. Yeah, it's all you. I'm not jumping that. <laughs> Sorry to not encourage. I <laughs> uh, swapped out the air shaft to make it 140. I rode it 160 for a long time though. Um, you rode this 130 bike as a 160. Yes. Well, I think it's a 120-ish rear stock. Oh, okay, so we don't know what the stock rear is. <laughs> I, I thought it was 120 like a Ripley. I think so. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah, it's a one, it's stock 120 rear. Um, and I rode it with a 160 for a long time. Didn't feel that bad. Like it actually rode really well, just like descending wise. Maybe climbing, it felt a little bit slacked out, but it was not, it was, it was I didn't mind it. Nice. I do like it more though, uh, set up 140 for sure. Okay, so you're at 140 oh, and then God. when we were filming, Cat, when you were filming Cascade and I was asking them all the 21 questions, mm -hmm. they gave you a Cascade link for this bike. Yeah, I've been curious about it and I was definitely very excited when they offered me a, a blim, like a whatever, they, a scratch and, scratch and dent. Yeah. I don't, I didn't see any scratches or dents, but uh, I'm, I, yeah, oh. I, 
So I put the link on and definitely I enjoy it. So on climbing, is there any noticeable difference? Yes, I will say um, it doesn't climb quite as well as it did before. I'm trying to think. Um, so in the uh, original Santa Cruz link, there's a flip chip. Mm -hmm. um, so you can have like a higher bottom bracket height or a lower bottom bracket height. And it also changes your progressivity, those, yeah. those two. Um, nice. I think I usually went, usually rode it in the lower bottom bracket height. Um, and it was good, it was fine. Um, but I definitely, now with this new link, which doesn't have uh, a flip chip, um, it descends way, way better. But how does it climb? Yeah, that's what you asked me. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't climb as well. I, I think I was trying to get there, but it doesn't climb as well as it, as it used to. Um, I, I almost never used to, to like lock out the shock. Um, now I do find myself doing that more. When you say it doesn't climb as well, is it by going up and down or is it just moving more when you get <clears> bumps <throat> and cycling deeper into the travel on small bumps when seated? What's, what's not so great about it, I feel? Um, I mean, I guess like straight up and down, it doesn't, I don't notice a huge amount of difference. Okay. Um, a little bit. Where I notice it the most is when I'm like out of the seat, like cranking. I don't, I, I mean, looking at the, the, the differences between the, like the Cascade Link and the, um, the OEM Link, I don't know if it should feel the way that it does, but it seems to me that it does. It seems like when I'm really like standing up out of the saddle cranking, there's more pedal bob. Okay. Than, than originally. So maybe um, it's a little bit more responsive and then when you have like, you chop wood with those ax strokes. Yes, exactly. It's the whole thing into a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly as you're guiding me in the direction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it definitely, it is a lot softer up top, which for the way that I ride this bike, that's kind of, it works really well. Um, cool. Yeah, a lot more, a lot more supple up top and definitely, I don't know, feels like it can handle like just, we're just smashing on it. Like I, I shuttle, I shuttle with this bike all the time. Does anyone else in the world shuttle with a tall boy? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure somebody does. Well, if you shuttle with a tall boy, say something in the comments. <laughs> YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but it, it definitely handles like, I don't know, a, like gnarly, chunky stuff a lot better than it did before. So it's softer up top. And then do you notice when you hit bigger things that you're not bottoming as easily? Yeah, I do. Um, that is something I will say like overall though with this bike that I've been impressed with, even though it's a very short travel, um, I don't like clap it out that much considering how much, uh, like, I don't know how much huck to flats that I do, how many I do. Um, but with the link, I, I do less. Less, perfect. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't. And then last thing, are you able to jump higher and further <laughs> with the extra progressivity when you're pushing into the face of a takeoff? Um, I think I actually do feel a lot more comfortable jumping now. I don't know if it's something that I've just become more comfortable with, but I don't know. I do think that it seems to feel a little bit better jumping, I think. I um, definitely did not nerd out about this. I, it was given to me and I was like, oh, I'll give it a go. Yeah. And I do like it. I, I don't think I'm gonna switch back. So I think- You don't want your money back. I don't want, yes. Uh, who wants to buy a, a link? <laughs> a no. stock link? Stock Santa Cruz link. <laughs> I don't remember what the what the tape was for. It looks terrible. Anyway. What's the Elmo nose for? The what? Elmo nose. Oh, I don't know. I found that in my truck. I don't know where it came from. If you're missing an Elmo nose, talk to Logan. I'm, I don't know why that is, hasn't, I'm surprised it hasn't fallen off, I mean. An easy way to think of the Cascade Components link is it's like an angle set, but for your suspension. It's not required but there's definitely a very real subset of riders that are gonna benefit very highly from having that different leverage ratio. Speaking of Jensen, I've got a link down below over to Jensen USA. They're a leading online retailer for all things mountain bikes, whether it be complete bikes, shocks, shock rebuild kits, tires, whatever you need to stay rolling this summer, Jensen has you covered. Anything you purchase at that link below will also help support my channel and help us keep making videos, which you are hopefully enjoying as well. Um, I'd love to hear some feedback on if you've tried these links and how you've noticed them to change. I think we're heading in the right direction and I would love to try the link for the Ripmo because that's a bike where I'm I am running quite a bit of volume reducers regardless of the newer, more aggressive suspension layout. So 
With that said, we're gonna get back out and keep trying out some more linkages. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.